welcome back this video is for you if you want to start coding in the browser of your choice with almost zero setup the screen that you are seeing here is the github if you don't have your github account then create one if you just have email address then you can create easily on the top bar you can see here there is pull request issue code space and explore from the thumbnail you already know that we will be talking about github code space so let's say that you want to code something on the browser itself and you don't you don't want to set up anything let's right click on the code space it takes us to the place where it says your instant dev in and there are some templates and all these things what is this what github does in the background github spins up a container if you are new to container let's say it opens up a machine for us to use virtually in the cloud somewhere you can install docker images or any other packages as if you are running it on your local machine so that is the that is how github code space work behind the scenes before before starting the code space i will I, have, I will provide you the link in the description box that you need to know something about billing how the billing works so here it says that the github code space is paid for either organization or something something like that and then here on the down it says that the following storage and core hours of users are included free of charge for the personal accounts you can have the free personal accounts 15 gb per month and four hours per month is 120 so i think this is more than enough for the for a developer or for someone who wants to do something on git right i will provide the link also in the description you can go through all the all the description here it explains that okay what is the code space compute so two core one hour including uses multiplier two and it costs around 18. so this is after you exceed your free tire or what they are giving us for free i don't think we will need this or you will need this but in case if you want to do some extensive coding you have group or you have team of people then you can go through this documentation and see which best suits for you now let's get back to the code space ui there are three ways how you can start coding one is for example let's say that you already have a, a repo created and you want to convert that repo into the github code space so how you can do that here on the top there is the plus icon just click on that and it says new code space right so if you click new code space it will open up this and here you can choose the existing repository let's say i choose something like this random and then it says okay this is a master branch and then it's which region you want to spin up the container you can choose any of this and here is the good part that you can choose what cores like two core is 4g storage i think that's more than enough for us but you can even go for four core but don't overkill the container because if you don't need that big of the storage or ram don't go for that you can just use the small version of this one then i can create the code space and it will create a container for us let's not do this for now let's say that we are back to the main ui of the code space here it says blank and there are many other templates here if you can see there is if you want to work with flask django what is this preact i think it's react or preact i don't know oh there is react and there is preact <laughs> good to know and there is other different uh, templates already created for us let's say that we want to create a blank work space right so if you want to create the blank then all the packages you need to install by yourself so that is that is one option for that you can just use this use this template let's say that we want to use the blank template then it will start spinning up the container for us as it says setting up the code space so you can see it opens up a vs code with a blank blank let's say that it it opens up a blank template and there is already the vs code there now it's spinning the cluster so here it says okay there, it already gives us the terminal it's it's the same as vs code that we use on the local machine right so you can do whatever you want here you can create a file you can customize this for example if you press command shift p it works according to what you use to work in normal VS code in your local machine and you can do settings or anything what you want you can change the theme or any of the things here but I'm not going through this what I am actually going to do 
this cancel that and if you want to see where those where that blank space resides you can go to code space again and here you can see there is a musical <laughs> dollop it gives a random name for that and it's active and it says the storage is still retrieving that means the code space is still in the creating phase and we are using two core right for example let's say that we don't want to use this we can stop the code space let's not use the resources if we are not using and then you can maybe come later and do this or then you can just delete this it says okay so that's done what i want to do today is because this channel is about data science stops so in data science we will be using jupyter notebook for data exploration kind of things right so how i am planning to do this today is for example if you haven't watched my previous video i have explained about data analysis and training machine learning model with chat gpt i have written some code there but i used google collab there what you can do now is use the same approach go through the video and use uh, git instead of google collab so the code is already in the repository and you can come back and do whatever you want and then it's already in the github for that what we can do is use this template let's use the template of jupyter the best part of this is that github already installed most of the packages that we will be using for data science let's say for example in the previous video he, there we were using c1 for doing some visualizations we use scikit learn for importing logistic regression and all these things and we use pandas to load the data and all these things here is a terminal and i want to see okay if there is pip installed or not i can type pip 3 version and we can see there is a pip let's see if there is python or not we can say python 3 version and there is already the python installed for us this is how uh, we can work in vs code but for me personally what i prefer doing is if i have to write some python code or only code i will use vs code but if i want to do some exploratory data analysis i prefer using uh, jupyter but here we but here when we spawn the container it opens vs code for us right let's say that i write something here let's create a file let's say that test.py is the file and i can say let's just say for the sake of printing i can say hello old right so i can save this and then I can run this. So let's say, okay, shift enter and it says print hello world and it prints hello world for us. This is just the demo I'm showing you. Let's say that we exit, okay, for exit, I can do exit. I have this file test.py here in the VS code, right? Now let's say that I want to do some data exploration kind of things, but for me, I prefer, although there is already the Jupyter install in vs code i prefer using the main jupyter jupyter server for that what i can do i can close this and here if you go to the code space again it will show that there is this the the container that we spawn just it says active now what we can do the good part of this is we can just click here and say that okay open in we want to open it in the jupyter lab because by default it opens in the vs code right visual studio code now let's say that we want to open this in the jupyter lab it's now setting up the same uh, code space that we had before but now in the jupyter lab if you want to do some exploratory data analysis like you can write the code and you can write the documentation at the same time this is much much better and the good part of this is that it also has the terminal integrated into it so I prefer working in this thing let's say that i want to change the theme i want to work in the dark theme i can already do from here okay it says that we want to receive something i can say no for now but yeah this is how and let's say that the file that we created in vs code it's now here test.py right if we click it's here so this is why because i can use jupyter to write the python code also but you see that it's not that intuitive it's better to write in vs code and let's say now that i want to do something with exploratory data analysis part and i want to use the same code that i explained in this video which i have also in 
git already here it's not here so here i will provide this link in the description so you can also go through all the code here so let's say that i want to run the same code i did on my previous video now let's say that i copy this command Control c i go back here i create a new maybe notebook if you want to give the different name you can just let's give test.ipython for now and now let's let's run as if we were running so for a markdown let's say that it is eda and it then you can maybe convert from here markdown and then shift enter this is the documentation and you can do all the stuff like this in the upcoming video i will create how you write markdown and also about jupiter so how what are the basics of jupiter and what things you can do in the jupiter but for now you can just type here control v we imported SPD. but remember that we didn't install the pandas right so if we want to check before this if the pandas is installed or not in the system you can already do in the uh, notebook itself or in the terminal let's say that we want to do in the note notebook itself you can type this exc exclamation sign peep you can say pandas if you type shift enter it will if there is pandas installed or not it says that there is already pandas installed now let's run the code that we just pasted import pandas as pd it says and now let's see the head data set dot head i think that is what we did in our previous video after we load the data okay anything is good but let's say that how many rows and columns are there but we can type data set dot set but before that in this video let's say that we want to look some data set dot head shift enter we see the top five rows and in jupyter lab you can just click this icon here it will maximize the screen that you are working so this menu folder icon here now we we run data set dot head let's say that we want to know what the shape of the data is data set dot shape and we see that there are 891 rows and 12 columns so now you can follow along all the things that i mentioned in the previous video already in the uh, github and now let's say that you are done with this you can just close from the top and it says changes that may that you made may not be saved okay cancel let's save it here is the save button here let's save this and let's close this now from here let's close this and now if we go to code space it's already here it says active and for now let's say that we want to stop this it, it's stopped so in the future maybe after one day two day whatever time is suitable for you you want to come back and continue the same project or same same thing what you have done before you can do it already in the browser so without with zero setup you can run the code and you can choose what kind of machine you want like two cores four cores and so on i hope now you get the idea how quickly with a with zero setup you can write code already on the browser of your choice yeah that, that's all for now and by the way before i complete the video if you find the content that i'm creating useful please consider subscribing if you haven't already and also like the video it's free so that's that's how you can motivate me to create new videos that's all what i can say it's up to you thank you and see you in the next video